Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to try Catan Universe. This is a free-to-play game that you can find on Steam, well, sort of, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, before we begin, it's important to stress that I lost my cat this morning. Uh, not lost, but she passed away. So I'm going to be a little bit more emotional and whiny than usual. Uh, and I know it's kind of weird that I'm starting off the video outside of the game, but I wanted to give you... A true first impressions what I was thinking when I was taking a look at the game that I was offered to play I was given a key to unlock some of the post free to play stuff but I was like okay like the the developer said uh, this this key will uh, unlock the core game and all the expansions until 2020 2020 I'm like okay is this a subscription What's going on? Why only till 2020? So that, that's when I started looking at the Steam store page and was like, okay, this is this is kind of strange. So let's go ahead and go over my first impressions of researching this game because I think this is important. And I think for reasons you'll see in a minute, the recent reviews are mostly negative right now, as you can see. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the business model. A lot of it has to do with uh, multiplayer not working correctly. So what is this game all about? Well, for those of you that don't know anything about Settlers of Catan, Settlers of Catan is a board game. Um, there was a video game adaptation that I remember covering before. I think it was uh, Catan Creator's Edition or something like that. I, I tried to find it on Steam, but it's no longer there. So at some point, the game that I covered in 2015 is completely gone from Steam. I don't know if this took its place or not. But anyway, Settlers of Catan is a tabletop game originally that tasks you with building roads, building villages, um, earning resources. It's a very cool uh, intro, I want to say Euro game, but it, it, it helps introduce players to uh, more advanced board games i think like this is a good this is a good gateway game is what i'm getting at um so if, i mean if you look at the screenshots here on the screen let's see if i can blow this up at all so yeah you you take one color you build roads there's numbers on these different tiles like there's a three and eleven and nine every every turn someone rolls a die uh two dice and whatever number comes up uh, that's, that's the tile or tiles that earn resources. So in this case, if you look at the number nine, for example, the number nine is rolled any one adjacent to it. In this case, there's a red village there. There's a green village over here, gray, blue. Everyone earns resources. Uh, you know, it's not just the player rolling the die. It's everybody. That's, it's a really cool feature. That means that you're always engaged in what you're doing. And as you earn these resources, you're going to be turning in those resources to, to build roads and villages and the like. And you also can buy development cards to do other things. Um, and your ultimate goal is to get so many victory points in order to win the game. There are other expansions that are available. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. Now, again, what does this free-to-play content entail? And this is why I wanted to sort of showcase this because it doesn't make a lot of sense to me i'm gonna go ahead and just zoom here there we go okay so as i was reading this play the basic board game in multiplayer as well as the introductory game of Catan the duel free of charge that's a separate thing um, that you can buy in card game form as well master arrival on Catan for free to unlock the single player and custom match modes for the basic arrival on Catan scenario permanently to play against the AI or your... so single player is not available right out of the gate if you're playing the free-to-play version you have to unlock it uh, based on what that's saying anyway uh, for even more variety activate the complete basic game as well as the add-on city and knights and sea fires which are true expansions to the board game uh, you get them as in-app purchases pricing info below defend yourself against barbarian invasions conquer new frontiers blah 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 all right so free to play content master the arrival on Catan introduction to unlock single player and custom match uh, base game is uh, free matches against two other human players so if you just jump into this without any buying anything you're basically just playing matches against other real people um, introduction match for Catan Duel, account creation and login bonus of 100 gold and two scrolls. I'll get to that in a minute. Scrolls can be used to unlock expansions for a limited time. Limited time. And gaining full access to auto match, single player, and custom matches. Uh, more scrolls can be unlocked by leveling up. 
features and add-ons, trade, build, settle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for stuff that isn't board the uh, game related. Uh, create your own avatar, chat with other players, guilds, uh, earn numerous achievements, uh, use your Catan Universe account to play via browser, further platforms in production, uh, get additional add-ons and game modes and as in-app purchases. Okay, so I, I and and as far as like the in-game store, basically you're buying this Catan gold, uh, and you can see the pricing structure here. And then uh, you use that gold to unlock stuff. The Catan base game and expansion are all available for 500 gold each. Uh, so that's about 1,500 gold uh, based on this. Now there's no price for that. It's just I guess 1,700 gold is what you'd get. I guess it's 15 US dollars there. Um, items like, um, no, it says, oh, various bundles are available, uh, the base game and both expansions are for 1,300 gold. Again, it's between 900 and 1,700, so it's, it's kind of a weird setup. Items like additional scrolls and XP booster are also available in various quantities, starting at 40 gold. Furthermore, numerous customization options for, yeah, so, first impressions of all of this junk. Okay. Now, again. Just forewarning you folks, I haven't actually played this yet to know how well that works. But first impression of the business model is a little worrisome to me. I mean, it's it's overly complicated in my opinion. Maybe it's not as complicated as it sounds. Maybe it's as simple as, you know, just spending 15 bucks to unlock stuff. Maybe it's that simple. I don't know. But there's all this other crap. Scrolls, leveling up, uh... uh a Catan gold, like, why? I, you know, I remember the day when I could walk into a store, here's my money, give me my stuff. Not today, not anymore. And this is, the, this is old father time, old dad time speaking here. Um, you know, I walk into a store now. Uh, yeah, I'd like, I'd like that, uh, that, that uh, coffee mug behind you there. Can I get that, please? How much is that? Oh, two dollars? Here's two dollars. Okay, and the cashier's like, uh, "Do you have a do you have a, a, a store card?" N no, I don't have a store card. Uh, thanks. Do you want one? No, I don't want one. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, do you have a coupon? You have a coupon here? Yeah, do you have a coupon? No, I don't have a coupon. Sorry, here, I have two dollars. Here you go. You know, if you open up a credit card, you can save ten percent right now. And <laughs> Yeah, so, no, I, I, I just, I just, here's two dollars, give me my stuff. <laughs> I, I, have a, I, I don't understand why this has to be so convoluted. Uh, you know, I, I just, Ticket to Ride is a, has a digital adaptation. Uh, the, the more recent Flashpoint Fire Rescue has a digital adaptation. Um, I'm trying to think of other board games that are on Steam now that are, uh, Unreal Estate is another one that's on Steam. Um, there's, there's a ton. None of them go to this extent, uh, in terms of scrolls and leveling up and unlocking expansions for a limited time. It, no, no, you know what, I would be ha I, all right, here, developer, if you're listening to this, Make my key that you gave me obsolete. I'll pay ten dollars right now to unlock the base game. Make every make every expansion two ninety nine, and and that's it. Get rid of the scrolls. Get rid of the leveling up. Just let me pay ten dollars to unlock the game, and if I want to, I'll buy expansions for it. And that'll unlock single player, multiplayer, local play, everything. Just why why? If, if, if unlocking the stuff in-game is easy as spending 15 bucks, fine. But why the gold? Why the scrolls? Why the leveling? Why? Just, you don't need all of that. It just, it, it seems, it, it screams freemium, not, not free to play to me. But that's just my opinion. And maybe it's not as bad as it sounds. All right, so I've complained long enough. Let's actually get in-game and see what it's like. What I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to not claim the code that I was given, just so I can see what free-to-play looks like to the new players. So uh, here we go. Okay, so here we are. We're in-game. I have not claimed that code yet. This is what the main menu looks like. There's a friends list on the left. Guild, there's messages. Now, again, I'm assuming these two are unlocked via the 
uh, you know, the, the pay, to, pay to play stuff. Player profile, here you can adjust. Now, the name John Doe was given to me. Uh, statistics, expansions, achievements, you can choose between male or female, skin color, head, beards, backpack, clothing, playing table. So uh, that's kind of cool. I like the fact that you can actually adjust some of this stuff, but it doesn't look like there's, doesn't look like there's a whole lot of choice. Now, again, this one's actually locked. So, and that's a worthy playing surface for your Viking playing pieces. Well, that's that's locked. So I really so I'm, how much customization is there? Locked, 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 locked. Okay, so free to play game. You're stuck with whatever you're given, basically. Terrain hexes. It yeah, it doesn't look like the whole lot of options there either. All right, expansions, uh, the game, Seafar, Cities and Knights, Rivals for Catan, Age of Enlightenment, Age of Darkness. Again, Rivals for Catan is the two-player, I believe. That's the two-player uh, separate card game that I have. I've never played that. I've, I've always wanted to try it, but um, and this might be a good uh, medium in which to do so, but I, I want to take a look at this as a, as a game-slash-business model as opposed to uh, anything else at this point in time. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, ELO leaderboards. Uh, here you can visit your profile and change your avatar as well as set your favorite color. Okay, let's do that. Uh, ranking, friends only, the game. How do I switch my... It says I can switch that. How do I do that? Okay, it, it, okay. is that... Mis Did I not read that correctly? Here you visit. you can visit your profile and change your avatar as well as your favorite color. I click that. All right, so where am I and how do I, John? I'm going to search for myself. John Doe. <laughs> John Doe, John Doe, John Doe, John Doe. None of them are me. Okay, so I don't know why I can't. All right, whatever. Almanac, options, sound volume, music volume, resolution, windowed mode, quality, anti-aliasing. I guess we'll turn that on a bit. Simplified graphic effects, miscellaneous, activate arrival on Catan. That's wh whatever that is. I think you have to get through that to unlock the single player content um, and, and whatever else. Again, if you go to the previous part of this video and go to the Steam Store page, it'll actually explain that. Um, I'm tempted to activate this because I really don't want to play against anyone. I, I, I don't. I don't want to play multiplayer. I'm not that kind of guy. All right. So what is this? Welcome to Catan Universe. My name is Kat Candemar. Kandemir, and I'm one of the first settlers. Uh -huh. If you'd like, you can play the Arrival on Catan together. It's a number of small quests, which are meant to serve as a little guide. As a reward, you would play all game modes, including usually restricted play versus AI on the first island of Catan. This option is only available for players who either played through Arrival on Catan or purchased the base game. All right. You know what? Not now. So uh, what I'm going to do... Now that, now that we have an idea of what you're going to get, uh, all you can really do right now is you have to play that Arrival on Catan or do a free match. There's a tutorial in the free match. Single player, auto match, and custom match are offline for anyone going into this for the first time. So we know what you get when you play or free to play. Now let me go ahead and activate the code that I was given. Again, only good till 2020 for whatever reason. Um, I'll, I'll, and then we can actually see what we get from that. So uh, bear with me here. Okay, and we're back. So for about three or four minutes, I was fumbling around on this menu over here to the left, trying to find where the heck to put in this long 15, 20 digit activation code. Turns out, oh, there's a separate menu for that. Upper right hand corner, there we go. Catan gold, uh, here's where you can spend your real USD, US dollars to, to buy this stuff. Again, it doesn't come in increments that seem to be friendly for uh, you know what you're purchasing. For example, let's take a look at the expansions. The Catan, the game, is uh, 500, okay? If we come back here, Catan gold, load. There's no option for 500. There's 400. There's 900. Why? 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 Uh, scrolls, you can buy scrolls too. Uh, 50 gold, 200 gold, 350. Yeah, so avatar collection, you can buy different sets. Ugh. Boosters, bundles. Okay, so wh what does the board game bundle entail? What does that mean? Catan the game, Catan, okay, so that's 1300. Again, Catan gold, is there a 1300 gold option? 
Is there? I'm clicking. Nope. There is 900. There's 1700, but not. Th Why? Why? So, yeah, I just. No. Now, this promotion code that I was given doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. I, I'm, I'm going to wait for the developer to answer me back on this one. And we'll try again. Uh, I'm going to pick the video back up when I can actually get this to work. So stay tuned. Okay, and we're back. Uh, to the developer's credit, they did manage to hook me up with one uh, relatively quickly. So kudos to them for their customer service skills. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into this now that I've got that activated. Um, to go back to the main menu. All right, now I should have access to a lot more stuff, but um, okay. So on the very bottom, we can toggle between, there's the game, here's Seafarers, here's Cities and Knights, and Rivals for Catan. This is the free introductory game for that. Okay, that's something I do want to play at some point, because uh, I do want to get the card game, because uh, I'm a big fan of Catan to begin with. I prefer Star Trek Catan myself. Um, it's, it's a Star Trek themed Catan board game, although it's not set up to accept the expansions from, you know, the normal themed game, but it's still pretty awesome. All right. So we're going to play a single player game against the AI. I'm curious though what this custom match has. Um, so we can choose the game first Island or for wool and the Harbor master or the different maps. Um, victory points, you can adjust that as you want to to make the game longer or shorter, 10 being normal. Turn timer off if you want to. We turn that on, it's 40 seconds up to 160 if you want. Friendly robber, I don't know what that is. Uh, I know, I know what the robber is in, uh, Catan. Whenever you roll a seven, uh, the, well, the player rolling the seven gets to pick the thief up. No, no tile has a seven on it, uh, so no resources are in. Instead, the person that rolled the seven gets to pick the thief up and put him, or the robber up, and put him down uh, somewhere to steal resources from other players and to prevent those tiles from earning resources in the future. Uh, but I don't know what friendly robber means. Uh, it doesn't, a tooltip here would have been great. A dice mode, again, I don't know, again, you're rolling dice every turn, but I don't know what dice mode's all about. So again, I think having I think having some tooltips here would have been great. And add player. Uh, so I can add AI computers here. Rookie, veteran, master. Now, I guess my question is, what's the difference between custom and single player? Okay, so I think, uh, I think in the single player mode, the computer opponents are choos chosen for you. You can choose your scenario from the looks of it, but I don't think anything beyond that. You can't actually set victory points or anything like that. Um, you know what, let's go ahead and add, um, rookie and another rookie. Okay. So it's going to be like a three player game and I think everything's good. I don't want to turn on all of the expansions yet because, uh, like I don't want to play with those yet because I'm, I want to give new players a chance to experience the base game and not overwhelm them with some of the other expansions that are out there. Again, there are expansions. They offer new content, the CFARs, all that jazz. Really cool expansions, but uh, it's best to start with the base games first until you get a handle on that before moving on to the next one. So there's a lobby chat down here. Um, I'm trying to start the game. Uh, I'm not sure why this button is grayed out. Um, do I have to add the first island, the game, random, can I choose a map maybe? No, that's weird. Do I have to add four players? Um, this doesn't make any sense. Why does, why is start game down here? I've had nothing but issues with this interface. Just trying to navigate the interface figure out where things are. Like, there's no reason for this. Why can't I start the game? What's, what's wrong with it? Do I have to lock myself in? Maybe I can't play custom game. Maybe, I, maybe in order to play custom game, I have to have another live person playing as well. I don't know. Maybe custom game is just a way to play with other people and customize your settings. But that, that's unfortunate if that's the case. There, there sh I should be able to play this game as is right now without... That's stupid. All right, let's go back to single player and see if that's any better. Okay, we'll do the first island. New game. Okay, so, okay, you do have the ability to customize stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and turn him off. I, I liked, um, I liked uh, Gene here. 
Okay, fine. Oh, that's a veteran. I don't want a veteran. Um, Hildegard. Okay, and then... Okay, so now I can start the game. Ten victory points. All right, let's just start it up. My, my objective now is to see how user-friendly the end game is. And here's your ELO score, which I'm guessing counts for matchmaking. Okay, so... Um, Let's take a look around. Now, in the very beginning of the game, uh, p players get to place one, uh, I think it's, uh, I think they're called villages. It's been a while since I've played, but you place one village, one road. Each player does that, and then starting in the last player, they do that, then the second to last, and then finally the first player puts the last one down. So, um, if we look at the board, we see that this looks like a randomized board, because in a normal setup, in the, in the standard setup, the thief is in the middle, and these numbers are, like, in a set place. So it looks like the numbers are randomized here for you experienced settler of Catan players. Um, I wonder if there's a way to customize the board. Can we, can we do that? Doesn't look like it. All right, well, anyway... Um, what numbers are we going to want to get? Now, whenever you're rolling, rolling dice, you'll notice that some of these are red numbers. Red numbers mean that there's a better chance of getting rolling those numbers. I mean, there's when, you, when you're dealing with two dice, uh, seven is the best number. Like, seven is the highest odd, you know, that, that's the best number that you could possibly roll. It has the highest chance of coming up because there's a lot of different ways to make seven on two pairs, uh, two dice. With a six, it's the same way, eight. When you get into, like, the twelves, it's a six and six. There's no other option. The snake eyes, two, it's one and one. There's, there's not a whole lot of combinations there. So I want to try and find, play, like, I think this eight, nine, ten combination might be a nice one to have. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put that there. And then I guess a road, how do I, okay, I have to check mark down here, okay. And then one road going, I'm going to go up with this. All right, and lock that in. Now the computers are going to do that. And then they get to go, then I get, then, okay. So I get to put another one down somewhere. I'm thinking 2, 3, and 11 are terrible. Um, looks like they're pretty smart. Uh, maybe if I put one here, I wonder if I can. Yes. And then I go this way. And you get resources on that last drop, and then we'll go this way with it. Check. Okay. So that gives me some options. I can expand to the right. Um, you get points for longest road. You get points for, uh, every time you put down villages and, and roads, you get points for that. You can upgrade these villages into, um, I don't know what their official terms are called, but you can upgrade them. And actually upgrading them is actually nice because whenever you roll, say a 10, like if I rolled a 10 right now, I would get one of that forest resource. However, if I have an upgraded village here, I would get two of that resource instead of one. All right. So we're going to roll the dice. And, we, and our eight was rolled, so I should get, I got some resources here. Um, I have two forest and two mountain, two ore, whatever. And where is the buy menu? There should be a way to, okay, um, what does that mean? All I want to do is buy stuff. I'm, I'm looking at my interface. Start trade, trade with bank. Yeah, you can trade with the bank four to one, if I remember correctly. Um, if you own one of these harbor tiles or have a, 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 a town or whatever next to a, a, a dock tile here, harbor tile, you uh, can trade for that resource a little bit less to the bank. But primarily, you're going to be trading with other players because you can offer anything you want to. All right. So um, what does this button do? It, okay, so I guess that ends my turn. Player trade. Do you want to trade with uh, Gene? Um, sure. So what are they doing? Are they offering me what, where's, what, how? Player, bank. I'm not exactly sure how this is. I mean, okay, this is my resources here. Three, four, two, or. All right, again, trying to figure this out and what they're what they're offering is okay. So I get are they offering? What are they offering? I don't want to agree to something. All right, they gave me that for an ore. Okay, so the bottom row I think is mine, and the top row is theirs. All right, I do need I have enough wood, so the answer is no to that. All right, and eight was rolled again, so I have a lot of wood. Um, do I want to trade with Hildegard? 
Uh, they're offering me ore for wood. I've got a lot of wood. Um, again, I would love to see the build menu so I knew... I, I don't... Okay, build costs. Here we go. Can we see this? Oh, okay. I can actually drag. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I'm not limited to this. So here's the table. I can drag it around with the left, left mouse button. Here's the build costs here. Okay, so settlement and roads. I'll need a lot of wood for both of these. The settlement is what you first start with. That's what uh, these things are here. And the city is the upgraded version of that. I'll need a lot of ore. So maybe I don't want to trade anything right now. Although in order to build roads, I need this brick. Development cards, sheep. All right, so there, I don't think I'm going to trade anything. Actually, you know what? Uh, you know what? I'm going to keep my wood uh, because uh, roads. I need a lot of wood for roads. It looks like they're trading. All right, so he's turning something in. She, I believe, for something. Did she, what did she put down? Oh, another road up here. Okay. I'm going to actually uh, set up for a screenshot here because I need a thumbnail. There we go. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and roll the dice. I got a six. Again, that's I'm um, next to this. I have a lot of wood. A lot of wood. Um, so do I want to trade? I'm thinking yes. Uh, tr start trade. I'd love to start trade. How come it's not working? and turn I, I i'd like to start trade but unfortunately the button is not working i can't trade with the bank either what's up with that now what stinks is i can have i think my hand limit is seven so i i'm i want to get rid of some of this wood in favor of other things um what's this here you can set that you do not want any trade offers no okay so the trade menu that's weird there's a start trade button on up here that doesn't work, but I can click on this here to find the trade menu. That doesn't, I don't understand that. Okay, um, let's get, let's see. I want to give wood. I need brick. So let's offer. No player wants to trade. Of course not. Um, can I, can I do another one? Uh, wood, how about... I'm, I'm tempted to give up two for one. How do I get... Okay, two and then one. All right, let's see. No player... Okay, I guess brick is actually kind of hard to get right now. All right, so I guess we'll... we'll I might have to try with the bank on this one. So I'll give up four wood for one brick. We'll get more wood in the future, seeing as how we've got sixes and eights and tens. Those are going to be high rollers, so we're going to get a lot of wood. All right, so we're going to end our turn. And, oh, they rolled the robber. No one got robbed because no one had a hand limit over seven. And where, okay, so they put the robber up here. So anyone that rolls an eight, uh, gray here is not going to get this resource until that thief is moved again or that robber is moved again. All right, trade. Uh, do you want to trade with John? Oh, uh, no, absolutely. I want my brick. Thank you. Nope. Do I want more sheep? No, I'm good. Night card played the robber. Okay, so people can get cards in this game, and they can they have various uh, effects. For example, um, the knight that was just played, you can move the robber with them. There are some cards that just grant out give you victory points. Um, so, do you want to trade with Hildegard? Uh, no. My turn. Okay, so I've got a lot of resources here. Again, if we take a look down here, um, I need. Okay, I've got the sheep. I need food. I need this. I need this here. I could build a road, but I also need. Let's go ahead and rule the dice. If I can get like, I have no nothing on food. I need to get over here. I think to get to this eleven. All right. Let's roll the die. Six people got food. I didn't trade. Um, I need food. I'll give someone wood for it. No one wants to trade. Of course not. Why would anyone want to trade? Um, all right. Let's see. I might, I might... I might do a road. Okay, so clicking on where you want to build... Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this... There's a good chance of him cutting me off. 
You know what? I might go down with this one and to the left with this one. That leaves this entire area here free for me. This is sheep here. This 2, 3, and 11. I can always go down and, and hope that I roll a 4. But I think... Hmm. Oh, this is tough. All right. Let's go this way to the right. And I guess we'll go ahead and end our turn there. Do you want to trade? No. No. I want my brick. No. Mmm, two food. Two food, you say? I will take it. That's all right. Hopefully a nine is rolled at some point. Uh, play or trade? No, I want my sheep. No, I want my sheep. All right, so, like... As far as this goes, I like this. It's a very pretty looking game. I love the zoom in, zoom out feature. I love, I, it feels like I'm actually like on Tabletopia or something playing an actual board game with rules as opposed to me having to manage all of that myself. I, I like that. All right, six. Unfortunately, we did not earn anything with that because there's a robber there. Um, I need to trade for brick so I can get, I want to get over here before he does. Um... Buying a development card. Hmm. Trade. I, I've got extra food that I don't want. How about I give up one food? I want a brick. No one wants to trade. Of course not. How about that and... Uh, I need... I need... I need brick. No one wants to trade for brick. Okay. So be it. So be it. Because I can't do anything without brick. I need one more ore for another city. But I, I, in order to build a city, you can't put a city next to another city, like adjacent here. It has to be two spaces in between. So, for example, I could put one here where the 2, 10, and 11 meet. I could put one there. I could also put one right here, which is what I was trying to do. Before, it looks like the computer and I are, are rushing to do the same thing. If I can, you know what? If I can trick the computer into, instead of doing a road, how about an ore? Oh, no, I, no, I have to put a settlement on, not a city. So I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to get brick anyway. Oh, man, that stinks. Um, what if I were to offer one brick or maybe two ore? What if I were to offer two ore? Let's see if anyone would take that. All right, two ore for one brick. No one wants to trade. Nope. All right, end turn. Oh! That's what I was trying to do. Green beat me to it. Okay, uh, four. Uh, okay, trade. What, what's the trade offer? Wood for... Mm. All right, I got some more wood. They want... Hmm. They want to offer me food. No, I've got enough food. I'm good on that. Cancel. Ah, uh, no, I need my sheepy sheepy. That's fine, too. Oh, boy. Um, roll the dice. Let's see what we get. Nine. I got... Oh, I got my brick. Now I get my brick. Um, I'd love to... Maybe if I build here instead, but there's a good chance he'll get to me first... I'm trying to get some sort of... I mean, I can always go down instead, but I need to put two road tiles to do that. I'd love to put one here and block... I, I want to isolate gray completely. Whereas if I go downward, there's a better chance of me... Like, I, if I go down with this, I could get possibly with this 11 and 8, and four. Like if I put one here, I can get. I can start getting some sheep. I don't have anything that can earn me sheep right now, so I'm tempted to go down with this. That's wasting this though. I don't like that. All right. Well, I we'll just do it for the sake of argument. Um, and turn the robber. Uh, do you want to trade? No. All right. The computers did. I earned another wood card. He's turning in something. What did you get? 
Oh, he built one back here. Okay. All right. Roll the dice. It's four. Again, nothing. Oh, the robber is down here now. Interesting. All right. I need a brick. So I need to possibly trade for that. Um, anyone want... Uh, how much food is it for? Okay, so to up. All right, how about? F I don't have any food. That's th maybe I should give up. I'll offer to give up one wood for a brick. I doubt anyone's gonna take it though. Take it. No. All right, fine. End turn. Yeah. Resources. It'd be cool if the game zoomed to players who are building stuff so I can easily see who's doing what. All right, roll the dice. Two. Oh, just that. Okay. I, st I have a lot of resources, and it's going to bite me in the butt here because if, if the robber is rolled, I lose some of that. I need, to, I need to get more bricks so I can get down here and start putting another settlement down. That nine is, is hard to roll, let me tell you. All right, let's offer two wood for a brick. No one wants to trade. Of course not. Um, how about wood and... I've got... Actually, you know what? I've got... I could upgrade... All right, let's upgrade this city. Let's do that. I've got all those cards. I need to get rid of them. So now anytime a 10, 9, or 8 are rolled, I would get double those resources over here. And I get an extra victory point for that upgrade. The robber. You, good thing I did that. Otherwise, I would have lost a lot. Okay, so the robber was moved over here. It's my turn. Roll the dice. Four. This guy's making out like a bandit over here with those bricks. All right. A um, lot of wood. A lot of wood. I need brick, though. Again, any takers? Anyone two wood? No, guess not. All right. Next turn. Oh, that wood. Uh, do I want to trade? He's offering me brick. Yes, I'll take it. He needed it for something. Probably a, a card, possibly. Oh, no, he might have upgraded here. Yeah, he upgraded. All right. Um, I need to. I need to roll the die. Give me a nine, please. A uh, six. All right. I got. F Look at all that wood. All right. So let's build this way. And if I can get another brick, I would need uh, food as well to build a settlement. So I need. I need food. And well, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually trade with the bank. Uh, first, I'm going to trade with the players and see if they'll take it. If I can do, say, two wood for a brick. No, how about two wood... F actually, yeah, two wood for food. No one wants to trade. All right, well, we'll do bank then. Four wood for one brick. Again, wood is easy for me to make right now. So I need to use that to obtain these harder-to-get resources. All right, see, I've already got my one wood back. Uh, do you want to trade wood? Nope, absolutely not. I need I need my sheep. Nope, I already... No. What was that? Nope. Two wood. No, I don't think so. No, I'm not getting rid of my brick. He's trading with the bank. Ten cards. Hopefully that robber gets rolled. No, I want my brick. He's offering me two food. For one brick. The answer is still no. He's trading in four... F okay, good. He's getting alert a lot of resources there. See, I'm getting that wood back real quick. All right. Uh, four. I, I don't need ore for the settlement, so the answer to that is no. Food. Sheepy, sheepy for... I need the food, but I also don't want to give up my only sheep either. So, again, the answer is no. I'm not going to help you out. Uh, more wood. Okay, so what I need to do is uh, offer wood. 
I need food. So how about that? No one wants to trade. All right, three wood for the food. No. All right, so I got to go to the bank. Four to one. All right, so that leaves me with, I think, enough to build a settlement here. There we go. So now I can start earning sheep and food, assuming 11 and 4 is rolled respectively. And uh, another thing, if an 8 is rolled, I get 2 wood from this and then 1 wood from this over here. So that's that's kind of good. I have 4 victory points and John Jean has 5 and Hildegard has 4. Okay, so my first impressions of this, and I could keep playing and, and drag this on till 10, but... Um, I, I want to sort of give my impressions now and, and end the video. I think, I, I like the game. I love Settlers of Catan as a whole. Uh, board game, video game, you name it. And I love, I love this. I love this. I love the look. I love the graphics. I love being able to zoom in, zoom out. I, I love this. It's just unfortunate that it's stuck behind a non-user-friendly interface uh, menu systems, and uh, a business model that is overly complicated. If they were to get rid of that business model, what they've got now, like if you need three or four paragraphs to explain your business model, I think you're doing it wrong. I think, again, charge $10 for the base game, two to three bucks for every expansion, and that's it. In the base game, include the multiplayer, the single player, the local matches, everything. Just, just 10 bucks flat. 10 bucks, I got my game, that's it. This ribbon crap, the experience crap, no. I, I, maybe I'm old, maybe I'm not with the times, but I think it's, it's, I think that whole system is just overly complicated. I, I don't like it. Uh, but single player wise, the game isn't bad. Multiplayer, um, I have, I obviously haven't tested that yet, but I am not keen in the idea that you have to play with random people in the free to play mode to, um, you know, to, to actually play. You can't play online with friends. You actually have to buy the base game to uh, play online with others. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. But I, there's a lot of people complaining that the multiplayer right now isn't stable. If you look on the Steam review section, a lot of the reviews lately are negative, And a lot of people are complaining that the multiplayer doesn't work. It bugs out. Um, people uh, leave the games before it's over and you're stuck. So, yeah, it, multiplayer doesn't seem to be very favorable right now. Single player wise, this is great. So, I guess if, if you were to go, get into this, I, I guess if you wanted to drop, I don't know what the gold equivalency is here, but dropping the 10 or $15 necessary for the base game and then playing single player, that looks feasible based on what I've played so far. I haven't run into any bugs yet on the single player aspect, but. Again, I, I just think that the whole microtransaction slash gold system is ridiculous. But take take what you will. I I, I am not going to push my beliefs on you. If this is your thing and you're okay with the, the, the business model, go for it. More power to you. Settlers of Catan is excellent game in, 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 as a whole. And this video game adaptation looks pretty nice too. It's just it, I just think it's unfortunate that it's sitting behind a business model and some really weird menu and... Uh, systems like that. I, I don't agree with that. But anyway, um, if you guys want to see the continuation of this, and I, I, in fact, this is a good test. Can I play this later? If I were to quit right now, do you really want to quit? Can it, Does it save? I, I guess this is another good thing to test. If it doesn't, I'll be kind of pissed. Single player, it does not look like it's saved. Okay, that's fine. I... I yeah, it would have been nice. I mean, with this being a game where you have to log in with an account, it would have been nice to actually save the game so that you can come back to it later. All right. Uh, is it worth it? It's free to play, so my advice is download it, install it, and find out. And if it's not your thing, you can uninstall it. Uh, I would Again, I would really like a game, though. It was just a flat fee. You pay for it, and that's it. But uh, we live in, in the free-to-play microtransaction freemium uh, market now, so... It's just unfortunate. If you guys uh, want to see more, let me know. If you guys haven't already subscribed to my channel, and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.